welcome back to another session of The Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr. And I am still Tim Pratt. Awesome. And today we are going to be looking at the Bourbon Barrel Quad. And we're here at Boulevard Brewing Company. And I think of the three that we have today, this is the one that uh, you're looking forward to the most. I am it? pretty excited about this beer. It's yeah. been, uh, been one of the favorites that, uh, that I think Boulevard's put out of mind over the past few years. It's a limited edition. It's incredibly small runs every year, and it just keeps getting better every year. Yeah, and these spend a pretty good amount of time in, you know, bourbon barrels, as you can tell by the name of it. In fact, just a little bit earlier, we were downstairs in the barrel room, um, kind of hanging out and, you know, checking this stuff out and seeing what they've got kind of sitting at the moment. And it looks like they've got some more of this going downstairs. Is that right? We've got a lot more of this going downstairs. Um, there's actually some in the barrel room that's now been down there for over a year. It was put in nice. in May of last year. Yeah. Um, that's going to be what's put out probably as the Bourbon Barrel Quad this year. Um, there's also some that uh, just a few months ago, I'd say about three or four months ago, they had uh, lined up, you know, on um, you know the uh, cellar floor. They had just added tar cherry to it, and they were actually letting the barrels foam over. And uh, I happened to be lucky enough to be working that day and got to uh, walk by and um, well, really just eat the foam. It was pretty good, you know, <laughs> eating foam, big deal. But when it tastes like tart cherries, bourbon, and really nice beer, it's kind of good foam. Kind of wish I made it into candy. Yeah. Hey, you never know. Give them enough time. Yeah. So I did want to point out too that um, you know this is a pretty big beer, and I don't just mean because it's in a 750 milliliter bottle. Um, this one clocks in at a whopping 11.8 percent. I did say whopping. Um, but yeah, we've uh, we you know Tim and I have actually shared this one once or twice before, and um, if you don't got some buddies around to help you drink it, it'll put you under. Yes. So um, you know the fact that we're going to be drinking three you know fairly big beers tonight, um, well, that's pretty exciting for me. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know to add a little bit of a background on the Bourbon Barrel Quad. Um, all of these are, you know, aged for at least 12 months. Some of them go for as many as 16. Um, they can be topped up two or three different times in the barrels, and they can actually have tart cherry puree added to them two or three times over that, you know, 12 to 18 months, just depending on how long it's sitting in there. Um, and we actually age all of these in Jack Daniels bourbon barrels. So one of the, you know, the main things you're going to see when you walk into that bourbon, you know, or the barrel room is just, you know, lines and lines of barrels that are stamped Jack Daniels or Templeton Rye on the back. Those are the only two yeah. barrels that we really use. And there's a couple of things that you have to notice when you walk in there as far as smell. Mark even made mention of it earlier that you mm. really smell nothing, but it's this nice balance of oak, whiskey, and beer. And it's... It's really a smell like you don't get anywhere else. And, you know, it's the smell of angel share is what it is. <laughs> it is. It absolutely is. <laughs> Which is now why I know why they call that beer angel share. But um, one thing I wanted to point out, and I'm sure a lot of you get this, um, you know, it's fairly obvious. Uh, Boulevard mm -hmm. likes to, you know, kind of play with the names of their beers. You know, obviously you have the Saison Brett because of George Brett here in Kansas City. Uh, well, what else is Kansas City really well known for besides jazz? Uh, barbecue and so I'm, I'm sure that you know when they set out to make this beer BBQ bourbon barrel quad was probably pretty obvious and uh, I thought that's it's one of my I think one of my favorite names for a beer just for that reason alone and of how much it you know kind of pays homage to uh, the city here which we're we, I don't know we, you can't see it but here we can see the entire skyline over here it's pretty nice it really is that's one thing Boulevard is always very good about doing is um, being mindful of brewing history and you know what's gone into it and you know the people that have uh, you know stepped in the those footsteps before us so yeah. you know it's it's a nice little throwback to be uh, to be original in one and you know still give something that uh, people can look back on later. You're cheating and smelling before. I, I am, man. I'm smelling it, man. It's I'll tell you what. It's it's a pretty nice beer right off the bat. There's lots of that nice caramel. Um, you know, even some of the stickier fruits like the prunes and the dates, things that you would normally get from, uh, you know, a really nice quad. But there is, you know, I can really smell that sour cherry. It's not so sour that it's like, okay, this is going to be a sour beer. Um, but it really kind of adds this kind of an astringency to those sticky fruits, which I think is nice. Yeah. There's a definite tartness that comes up kind of on the back end of the aroma on this one. And, you know, even if you really look at it, you can see that, you know, if you've looked at the regular bourbon barrel or uh, sixth glass, you know, it's a nice dark brown ale. This one even has a touch of the, uh, you know, kind of, kind of the red 
the almost light ruby that you know that the cherries are going to give to yeah. it. So you can see that it's really started to kind of transform that beer as it sat in Absolutely. the barrel. Absolutely. I really want to taste. And it. I'm so not I'm smelling a whole lot of booze either. You go right ahead. Not really. Go ahead and take a drink. Yeah, I just I wanted to point that out because that's you know that that's that's what I'm talking about. When we first had this beer, you know, like soon after it was bottled. It was pretty boozy, but I'm not smelling any of that now. So proof that you should let some bottles sit. And it's warm, but from the first time I drank this till now, it's it has smoothed out um, better than mm. really I think I could have even planned on it. The vanilla has really come out in that. Yeah. The oak is really nice, but still a little bit mellow. The dark fruits that Mark was talking about are just ever present. Yeah. And again, that cherry just carries through it's not you know ever present the whole way through but it's just it's there you can yeah. you can tell and man that's nice and I think that's a sign of a really good beer when you can smell numerous things or you can taste numerous things but none of them are really kind of the star of the show they really kind of are all on the same level that's what I like about this beer is that you know it's it's as sweet as it is bitter it is as tart as it is um, you know it's just a very, very well balanced beer, and I'm, I'm, you know, in terms of beers that you want to just sip, this is a great one. Well, and one criticism that I know I had heard or read about this beer when it was recently released or newly released back just before Christmas was a, a lot of people were flatly calling these flat, but as you can see, they're not flat. They have an appropriate amount of, yeah. of carbonation to them. It's not overly carbonated. It's not going to, you know, foam over in your glass, but it's just enough to add that sparkle and to really carry through the aromas through the beer. And I mean, it, it carries a good, you know, half inch of, uh, oh, and, and, you know, kind of a nice light khaki head. Yeah. It really, it's pretty tight. I got to say, man, this one is just absolutely fantastic. And yeah. I was, I was, as Mark said, I was looking forward to this one probably more than any of the other, you know, tonight. And well, there's a reason. Yeah. And guys, this is the reason. Yeah, it's it's definitely a good beer. But you know, I'll tell you, the one that I'm looking forward to the most is the one that we're gonna have on Friday. Um, so you know, hope you guys will come back on Friday. Uh, we'll be reviewing their Imperial Stout, um, and this isn't their Dark Truth Stout. Um, this is the you know the, the Smokestack Series Imperial Stout that was released last time in 2008. Um, I bought three of them when they came out. I drank one of them enjoyed it at that time. Again, it was a little, you know, high on the alcohol, and so I wanted to let the other two sit. And over the course of the last couple of years, I've just kind of been collecting beers, and not that they've been pushed by the wayside, but, you know, uh, I don't know, I just haven't really ever gotten to them. So, you know, I wanted to point out also that this week is when I will be posting my 100th session of the Hoppery. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to come down here and, and kind of, I guess, celebrate the moment up to um, you know, in our own cities, I, I think the best brewery, obviously. Um, but anyway, it's so, town. yeah, we'll come back on Friday and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. And uh, we'll talk to you here in about, I guess, 15 minutes as our time. As soon as we get through a little bit of this. Exactly. All right. Well, <laughs> you can follow me at twitter.com backslash the hoppery. And please always go to my website, the My name is Mark Starr. And I'm Tim Pratt. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.